I'm back. I'm Spelman Evans Downer. I'm here at my Abstracted Directions exhibition at the Yucca Valley Art Center. I'm in the music room, as I call it. One of the new abstract directions, a very important one, one that I have been pursuing for some time, is the notion that you can abstract from listening to music. This is not an original idea. I remember when I was in college and in graduate school and I was learning about modernism and one of the fathers of abstract painting, Vasily Kandinsky, made works based on what he listened to in music and he abstracted from symphonies and musical performances. That idea captivated me all the way back when I was a youngster. And over the years, I've visited it occasionally. It turned out in the early 2000s when I was in Alaska on my summer break where I was not having to teach classes at Copper Mountain College, and I was looking for something that would be a little different. I thought, I'd love to do some paintings to music, just like Mr. Kandinsky, and see what I could do. Some of those earliest paintings, they're all in Alaska. One of the persons that I used to experiment in that way was the same person that I was listening to when I did this piece, Jimi Hendrix. I was always intrigued by the Jimi Hendrix experience and the way he played guitar and the way he improvised and his solos. And I thought, I'd love to see if I can use that, just the way Kandinsky used symphonies. Maybe I could use Electric Ladyland or other albums by Mr. Hendrix. In fact, this is from that album, Electric Ladyland, the, the very famous song, uh, Voodoo Child. There were two. There was Voodoo Child and Voodoo Child Slight Return. The second one, the latter one is a longer, even more instrumental version, and that's what I'm channeling when I do this kind of work. Some of my abstractions are, are purely gestural, and some of them have imagistic elements. In this case, I'm listening to Voodoo Child. I stand up next to a mountain, and I cut it down with the edge of my hand. So it occurs to me that maybe I could have some mountains and I'm going to cut it down and turn it into the ocean over on the other side. And I'm improvising and I'm playing around and as Jimmy is soloing I'm reaching up and I'm attempting to follow his solo. I'm going to walk around and just give you some titles, maybe a few stories as we go. This is also a Jimi Hendrix piece, Castles Made of Sand, and I think you can see there's an imagistic castles made of sand, but I'm still channeling the solos, the gesture, the rhythm, the movement. One over here, this is uh, Marcus Miller has a wonderful show on uh, Sirius Satellite Radio. He calls it uh, Miller Time, the Marcus Party. It's three hours of curated jazz, and he has a, a wonderful show, and he's a very good spokesperson and an amazing bass player. This is called Marcus Party, and it was what happened when I listened to one of his shows on a broadcast, and there were all kinds of pieces. There was Herbie Hancock and Weather Report and Wayne Shorter and all kinds of people, and I mixed them up and I improvised the way they do. I, I love jazz. It's also one of the instrumental type of music is, is usually what I find as best to improvise and do these abstractions to. Let me, let me walk you down this way. This is uh, listening to Billie Holiday, a full length feature film that was a documentary about Billie Holiday. And I, I love her music as well. There's a, a big play on the blues. There's a play on color field painting. And then it's, it's very beat up. I mean, as you may know, Billie Holiday had kind of a rough life. So I tried to channel that and place it into this blue field, battered, beat up, but a little bit of glitter. And she had a wonderful voice. And it was 
very fun for me to try and channel that and see if I could abstract it into a, an important painting. Uh, another, another Jimi Hendrix, you can see this is stand up next to a mountain again. Here is uh, of local interest, the Joshua Tree Philharmonic. And this past December at Christmas time, I was there with my live music multi-camera video crew and we were live switching on about five or six cameras, the Philharmonic. And I came home and I was able to play back the recordings that I got and I came up with this. There's something about the color, there's no image per se, it's just the rhythm and maybe the holiday aspect of the music. Let me go over here. This is de Kooning-esque and Pollock-esque music. So that's a bit of a giveaway on two of my major influences, Jackson Pollock and Wilhelm de Kooning, two New York School abstract expressionist, major, major influences on my approach to painting. The Pollock is the drip, and I channel drips. I try and do it rhythmically. I, I try and make it into something. And the uh, de Kooning is the blade work. If you look at this closely, you'll see blades that cut into the wet paint. And both uh, de Kooning and myself have been house painters. So we have a lot of drywall blades and they make wonderful tools that you can use to make paintings. This is one of these enamel paintings that's beginning to wrinkle very nicely. And it turns out, uh, I discovered about two years ago, I have used historically Rust-Oleum high gloss enamel. I mentioned in the Los Angeles work that I was using high gloss industrial enamel. Most of it's been Rust-Oleum, which is a, a primo brand. But I discovered here in Yucca Valley, Tractor Supply. And I went into Tractor Supply, and it turns out if you have a tractor, you may need to paint it. And if you need to paint it, you need some enamel paint. And they have this wonderful black that has a certain wrinkling quotient. And it's not quite as shiny as the Rust-Oleum. And I just love that. This is called picturing notes and chords. And I'm attempting to take the notion of what is a chord. It's musical notes that blend together that make a feeling and a sound. So I'm using that as a way to set in motion an abstraction listening to Andy Norell, who is one of the best steel pan jazz players on the planet. Love his music. It also is a very improvisational and rhythmic jazz kind of form, so I'm channeling that. Here is uh, me thinking about Strawberry Fields, the very famous Beatles song, and I'm kind of going with the colors. Well, if it's strawberries, they're probably red, and maybe they're in a field, and maybe they're rows of strawberries, and maybe this is a field. If you look closely, there's nice little things that happen, little scrapes and little bubbles, almost allude to notes. Glitter that I've been using over in Ukraine, it was bombs and missiles. Here, in the music section, glitter is becoming notes. And I use glitter as an experiment to see, you know, what could it be? This one actually doesn't have the glitter, but it's got the little bubbles that form what I think perhaps suggest notes. If you want bubbles, you might have a hard time getting them. But if you've painted as long as I have, you discover that when you stir paint too much, it makes bubbles. You're basically stirring air into the enamel, and then when you pour it, those bubbles pop up. So just the way I've learned to pour too much enamel to make a distressed, folded surface that ages in a wrinkled fashion, I'll stir the paint on purpose to make bubbles. This is a, a very, very new piece. Pussy Riot is a anti-Putin band that I, in my Russian studies, I got onto them. 
I like what they're doing as an anti-Putin statement. And they had a recent performance called Putin's Ashes. And it's very abstract, but there's maybe black ashes. And in this case, I've got the rhythm and the invasion, and I've got glitter. In this case, they're little balls. This was an interesting piece in that I basically put the balls on the canvas while the black paint is wet. And because they roll, I shook it like this, and they, they all went to the black paint. So if you look, all these balls, we'll have to get a close-up of this, they're all stuck to the black paint. And it was one of these uh, moments of revelation where, wow, I could throw the balls onto dry paint, and then as they roll, they'll get stuck in the wet paint. So that's the Pussy Riot. And we, let, we end at least the bigger pieces here, back to Jimi Hendrix. Uh, if you can't tell, um, you would be forgiven. But if I give you the name of this, maybe you'll see where I'm coming from. The Star Spangled Banner. And this is me listening to Jimmy's very famous depiction of the Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock and the bombs and the explosions in the air and the rockets, red glare. So I'm channeling, I guess, the War of 1812 plus Jimi Hendrix. Okay, last, last wall. These are very small pieces. This brings me uh, very up to the current situation where I've had my multi-camera video crew embedded at First World, the alternative performance space that Bobby First has here in Joshua Tree. And I volunteered as a community service to tape the bands on multiple cameras. And then when I'm done, I'll go to the studio and I'll play the recording. And I'll come up with these abstractions. This is Son of the Velvet Rat. There's a bit of a play. They're Austrian, so there's this very angsty German expressionism that you might see if you know German expressionism. This is the she-hawk. Turned out that uh, Christy Carter was wearing an outfit that night. Lots of blues, dark purples, very glittery. So I channeled her outfit. Uh, John Curry. And this, let me see, I'm trying to remember. Ah, Russ Tolman. Listening to Russ Tolman and the Damn Luckies at First World. And I'm channeling their very last song, David Bowie's Heroes. Why it looks like this, I really don't know. The fascinating thing for me as an artist, I start in and I don't know where I'm gonna go. I don't have necessarily a final image. I'm so far away from the photorealism that I talked about at the early point of this video series where I'm depicting a map or a satellite image. I, I know where that's going. I have a design. I have a composition to follow. Uh, when I'm doing music, I'm often not sure even what I'm going to do when I get started. And the music starts, and all of a sudden, I have to come up with something. Let me end by saying that I'm actually channeling this into uh, live painting for music performance, and it's something I want to get into, where I go to music festivals and I paint the music that's being performed. I did it for the very first time up in uh, Alaska this last summer at Salmon Fest, and I'd like to do it again this next summer. But I want to be up on stage, just the way they do at Red Rocks, as part of the entertainment, where you get to hear the music, but you can see a painter off to the side. And what is he painting? Well, he's painting something that's based on the music that he's hearing. I'm not going to be the kind of person that I mostly see. It, it seems to be popular in Colorado, where the artist is painting the band, or painting the crowd, or painting hippie girls, or painting the tree of life. I'm going to go right back to Mr. Kandinsky, where I'm channeling pure abstraction in a much more modernist sense.
gestures and rhythms and colors and improvising and where they go, I'm not sure and I'm always surprising myself.